Okay, so in this video, we're going to show you how to conduct a coin toss experiment using a random number generator in Excel. So what we're going to do is we're going to simulate tossing of 25 coins. Uh, the coins are standard coins. They have two heads, uh, two outcomes. One is a head, one is a tail. And we're going to assume for our initial experiment that the coin is fair. And the number random number generator we're going to use is the rand function. And the rand function is going to automatically generate a number for us between zero and one, uniformly distributed. Um, and we're going to use that as the random simulation to tell us whether we have gotten a head or a tail. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to generate our list of random numbers. And you'll notice as I do this that every time I execute a command, the random numbers are going to reset. And for our purposes, that is perfectly OK. Um, if you want them to remain stable, then you can simply copy and paste them as values into another column, and then they will not keep updating. But for us to see how the random simulations work over time, we can leave them as random numbers. Now, the other thing I, I am doing here is I'm actually displaying the random numbers so that you can see how the formulas are going to check out, but it is certainly possible to do this all in a single cell to do the random number outcome and determine whether it we're qualifying it as a head or a tail all in one step. But again, for the purposes of illustration, I'm going to do it in two stages so that we can see what's going on. All right, so here's our random numbers. And you can see they're all over the place, but they're all between zero and one. Now, what we're going to do in order to determine whether the outcome is a head or a tail is since a head is 50% likelihood and a tail is an, another the other 50% likelihood, we're simply going to use an if statement. If the probability value, this number, the random number value, is less than 50%, then we'll call it a head. And if it's more than 50% otherwise, we will call it a tail. So we're going to use an if statement to do this. So we're going to call this cell, the one next to it, what, whatever that's doing. And we want to test the value in this cell to see if it is less than 0.5. You, again, you can use percentages here if you want. Excel will be able to handle it, but 0.5 is 50%. And then the rest of the if statement, what value do we want to display if, the, if it is true? And what value do we want it to, to display if it's false? I'm going to set 1 to be a head. So if it's less than 50%, I'm saying that's a head. And if it's more than 50%, I'm saying that's a zero. Now we could put in heads, actual H and actual T. Um, we would have to put quotes around the H. So for instance, we could put in H and T like so. Uh, but it's easier to count things if we leave them as numbers. And so I'm going to keep using one and zero just for the sake of simplicity. And if we hit execute, then Again, notice all of my numbers recalculated. This outcome now is saying this number is less than 50%, so I'm calling it a head. And then if I copy down this formula all the way down the column, then we can compare now. This number, again, it recalculated. This number is now more than 50%, so it's telling me it's a tail. This is less than 50%, it's telling me it's a head. This is more than 50%, it's a tail. More tail, more tail, less than 50% a head, and so on. And when we get to the bottom, if we want to count the number of heads, and this is why I didn't use heads and tails, H and T, because I want to just be able to sum up all of the ones And this will tell me that I have 14 heads. So 14 heads out of 25. I can calculate the proportion of those heads by dividing by the total number of tosses, which in this case is 25. 
And again, you'll, you'll notice every time I do a hit enter, it will recalculate. And, it, and what we can do is in fact, we can go to the uh, formulas tab and there is a button here right here, which will tell us to calculate now. So instead of doing a new calculation, I can just have it recalculate again. And you can see that what's happening with our, our coin tosses is that the probability, the, the frequency of heads is somewhere around 50%. There is definitely some variability. Sometimes we're a little lower, sometimes we're a little higher, but the values are not, they're not straying so far away. We're not getting 10% on a regular basis. We're not getting 90% on a regular basis. Most of the values are pretty close, although occasionally we do see some oddities. We saw that 0.72 pop up, 72% heads. But, and so, so you do get sometimes some variability, but they're still generally staying around the 50% mark. And if you, were to extend this list and do more coin tosses, then you would expect to see that that range of variable values would become smaller and smaller. This is the law of large numbers. The proportion would be closer and closer to 50% every time. Now we can't actually get 50%. If you have 25 values, you can't actually get 12 and a half coin tosses. So the average is around 50%. But no particular set of 25 coin tosses is ever going to be exactly 50% because of the odd number in the denominator. But if you were to extend this to 10,000 coin tosses, you would again see that it's it's centered around 50%, but, um, but there would be less wiggle room, less variability around the proportion. Now, if I this is assuming that the coin is fair. If I wanted to do an unfair coin, then all I have to do is change that cutoff value, the proportion of where does it, uh, where what do I call a head and what do I not call a head? So if we go to another tab, we can actually redo this calculation. We can say Rand again. And again, I'm gonna redo this 25 coin tosses experiment. There's our random number generators. And the only thing that I have to worry about changing is the proportion in my logical statement. So in the previous example, we said that 50% was 50% heads, 50% tails. Well, if I want that, let's say heads to be a little bit more weighted, then uh, I want more of them to come up than tails then what I, if, because the coin is unfair, then I can simply change that proportion. So instead of cutting it off at 50%, I can, let's say, cut it off at 75%. And then one is a head, and then anything above that would then give me a tail, a zero in this case. Copy that down the column. And now I can sum all of my outcomes and calculate the proportion. Out of 25. Now, sometimes we're gonna get similar outcomes. So we've seen 15 out of 25 heads on our previous simulation, but our proportion, this is not actually on the low end for this. Um, if we were to keep calculating, and we're gonna do that in a second, we'll see that the it's not gonna cycle around 50% anymore. It's gonna cycle more closely to 75%. So here's our 76. We didn't see that come up with our other example, 92%. 72%, 84%. So again, you can see that the center of what's happening is not actually 
at 50% anymore. It's now at 75%. And sometimes we get numbers that are similar, but most of the time we're going to get outcomes that aren't. We did see this value show up. So this is it, one of the issues that we have when we do simulations like this or any kind of probability assessment is sometimes distributions will overlap with each other. And so we see a value like 0. 0.6, like we have to assess like how likely is that value to occur in either of the two distributions in order to determine whether 0. 0.6 is an example of the, um, the distribution actually being off if it's not fair, or if in fact, this is just an unusual example from a perfectly normal, perfectly fair uh, coin. So this isn't high enough for us to get that idea, but that 92% we saw earlier probably would be a good indication that something is wrong. And we will see when we do hypothesis testing at some point that in statistics that um, there are probability assessments that you can do. And of course, increasing the sample size will make it far more easy to detect when in fact the coin in this case is unfair or whether the coin is fair and we just got a, an unusually high value in this one instance. 